Wrapped in plastic, wheeled around. Wrapped in bandages, wheeled around. Grateful we patched it up. Spinning spokes, handsome bloke. Eroding my armored coating. Bridge the moat. Building on independent, self-sufficient, autonomous. Open to being close, cooperating, co-creating. Interdependence, self-validating. Learning the give and receive function. Keyboarded sonic sound healing, revealing peeled layers, looping voice echo reverb. Monotone mechanical, contrasting with seduction voice. Choice, adventurous, acting the play. Laughing crew, green room, video screen. Motorcycles skidding in front, surrounded by caring, helping guided hands, directing traffic, holding his helmet head, wishing him well, strong healing light. Witness to this crash, then on to stage, cheesecaking, breaking free, chrysalis cocoon blooming in the black box room. Wondering about the thunder. Sun feels good on my bandages today. Happy for infinity mirrors, worth the line. Keeping the mind lined with divine energy, shape-shifting. Clear the muck, no more sitting duck. Practice the no and yes. Embrace the grace of repeating patterns, infinite intricate patterns. Climbing spiral ladders, sometimes like the Mad Hatter, back to Equanimous, peaceful clean slate, clear white Blake canvas, weed the garden, carefully fertilizing, recalibrating chaos, finding order in chaos, chaos in order. On the border now, I bow, I bow. I bow, grateful for breath, heart beating, brain waving, paving the way every day, precious, full spectrum feeling, cultivate joy and healing, no denial but careful directing of focus and energy, eggs hatching, some toss into compost bin, transform, to that which is useful. Some seeds weeded, other seeds watered, sun to grow, tall, solid, strong. Keep on keeping on. I want to feel safe and secure. Finally, I'm clear on this, feeling fully this, disappointed, disjointed in the past. Scars are healing. Create from the now new patterns. That's a poem I wrote today, July 8th, 2017. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, podcast number 39. It is July 13th, 2017. And now enjoy a monologue I did when I was in a particular mood. Chances are I'm in a different mood now. Just wanted to share with you. This is for catharsis and mental health cleansing, clearing purposes. I hope that my words inspire you in some way to be more honest with yourself or to be more expressive with yourself. I'm finding that in my life, in some ways, I think I'm not fully honest with people. Um, I feel more like my real self sometimes when I record my voice like this and when I'm online. You know how some people say that People are fake online and different than they are in their real lives. I kind of feel like the opposite. I feel like in my real life, I'm kind of reserved and quiet and I go along with things that I don't necessarily want to do and be and feel. And I kind of try to conform in some ways. And then I feel like 
when I'm free to express myself into the microphone, perhaps I'm more honest. And sometimes online, I feel like I share things that I'm afraid to share in real life or in regular conventional life, whatever you want to call it. I'm just wondering about that. But here is my monologue. Enjoy. And if you want to hear music, just go to shannonkringen.com and find my link to my music. There's all kinds of MP3s that you can download for free. Thanks for listening. And if you want to do your own podcast, I highly encourage you to. It is not that difficult. You just need to get a good microphone. I have one that's called a snowball or something. And then I just plug it right into my computer and I use a software that's free called Audacity. And it's an audio recording software thingy Mick Jagger. And that's all you need really is, is a high speed internet connection and a microphone and audacity. And then you can just record yourself and splice things together and edit and then upload to free websites. There's a uh, mix cloud and Bandcamp and Patreon and YouTube. I do the YouTube uh, podcast upload by having my visual art be slideshows and then you can listen to my podcast. So that's how I make my podcast visual by doing that. So thanks for listening. Bye-bye. And actually in other news, I'm excited. Tori Amos has a new album coming out. I don't think I'm going to go to her concert. It's called Nature Invaders, I think. And I am excited to hear her new music. I don't think I'm going to go to the show unless somebody gives me a free ticket. <laughs> if anybody wants to give me a free ticket to the Tori Amos concert in 2017, feel free. Uh, my dad and I are going to go see Tom Petty in August of 2017 and I think that's the last big concert I want to go to. I also volunteer at the zoo here in Seattle and I volunteer for all of these most of these zoo concerts so I'm able to go for free in exchange for working the shows so I get my fill of live music usually doing that. I got to see Jeff Beck, Lucinda Williams, Roseanne Cash, Joan Baez, Blondie, Jewel, the B-52s, um, all kinds of interesting musicians have come to the zoo and I'm happy about that. I love music and enjoy the monologue. Feedback welcome. Thanks for listening. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. And <clears throat> um, I'm having a bit of a challenge right now. I'm thinking that I feel like I want to call somebody and get some kind of support I realize now that uh, I'm in a play and um, it's going fine. I've done two performances. Tonight I'm going to do my third and we have six total performances. And I'm grateful that I was invited to be in this play. I have a very small part and I think there's 16 people in the cast and that's going well and I'm proud of myself. I'm also a full-time art model. And I just went and audited a store and I get paid for that. And I also get paid for delivering groceries from time to time. But generally, 95% of my income is from modeling for art students and medical students. And I'm a very strong person in that way. I pay all my bills by myself. I'm independent. Uh, I have certain issues with each of my parents. I'm kind of obsessed with analyzing my mother and my father and the boundaries that I have with each of my parents. And something recently happened. My boyfriend actually was going to come and see me in the play, but he cannot because his uh, he had something happen at his house. I don't want to talk about the details because he's a very private person, but let's just say that something upsetting happened uh, at his house. And so he has to stay at his house uh, during the play today and do something to fix a problem at his house. And he can't, you know, he has no control over that. Um, if somebody else could, could stay at the house, that would be fine. But there's nobody else that can do that. And we're not trying to find somebody to do that. Uh, but I'm kind of sad and disappointed that my boyfriend can't come and see me in the play. And then next weekend, he has to go out of town to take care of a family member that lives three hours away. So he's definitely not going to be able to see me in the play. So I won't get any support from my boyfriend from the play that I'm in. And my dad might come to the play uh, next weekend, um, but hopefully my dad won't criticize me and he'll, you know, usually my dad either criticizes me in a subtle way or he just tells me, good job, I'm so proud of you, wish I had the guts to do that. And then he'll say something like, um, 
you might want to blah, blah, blah. Like he'll tell me I should do more plays or, you know, he'll basically, usually my dad either criticizes me a little bit um, and gives me constructive criticism on how I could do better or tells me that he's proud of me and that he wishes he had the guts to do the same thing to be on stage, but he can't do it because he has stage fright. He used to write comedy and music, but he never went on stage. He was also a very talented tennis teacher. Uh, very, very good athlete. He's still very athletic. He's 71 and he's still really, really, really fit and strong and as lean as a as he was in high school. He's very tall and thin and muscular. So my dad is very healthy physically. So I'm proud of him for that. But he usually will say something like, hey, good job on the play. And then he'll say what I could do that would be better or like, oh, you might want to think about doing more plays or you might want to think about. And the bottom line is I need to stop being so affected by what my father says to me, whether it's good or bad. You know, I need to do my own thing. I need to have the Shannon Kringen boundary in place so that I believe in myself and that I do what I want to do and that I don't let other people's opinion, whether it's good or bad, uh, interfere with what I want to do and just to do my best. And then my mom is not going to come to the play because she lives really far away on an island and she really can't afford to put gas in her car and come to the play and the city stresses her out anyway. So my mom is not going to be coming to the play unless I could buy her ticket and pay for her gas and, and maybe even give her a ride to and from and it would take two hours each way and she doesn't really like coming to the city very much and spending the night in the city stresses her out. She would rather, you know, go back to her island home, which is nice and quiet. So my mom likes a lot of quiet, peace and quiet. And this is fine. I love both my parents, but I feel like so angry with them. And they neglected me as a child. And uh, they also did a lot of good things for me. My parents are both animal lovers. They're sensitive. They're intelligent. My dad is very athletically gifted. He has a good job. He's very responsible financially, etc. You know, he's going to move to Florida and retire. He has a new girlfriend who is a fitness model. And so my dad has an interesting uh, situation with his retirement going on. My mom is uh, living um, on an island and she's kind of having a tough time financially, but I don't want to say too much about that. She's a very private person, but let's just say that I have to have stronger boundaries with each of my parents. Um, and then my boyfriend is trying to not have... Um, let me do a codependent thing with him in terms of needing a certain kind of emotional support from him, which is what I have to give myself. As a 48-year-old, you know, I'm learning the hard way that in, in order to really be an adult, like I feel like emotionally, I don't feel like an adult. I feel like my job situation is I'm a really hard worker. I work a lot to the point where I'm exhausted sometimes, but I really do like my self-esteem like basically is boosted when I work as a figure model for artists and I feel a sense of purpose and they appreciate me and I appreciate them and I'm really happy about that. And I'm doing this podcast right now, recording my voice and whoever's listening, thank you for listening. And if nobody is listening, hey, Shannon Kringen, you're important in yourself and it's good that you're recording your voice and you are expressing yourself because someday you're not even going to be alive on this planet anymore. And so what you leave behind is your art and your recording. Since I don't have a family of my own, I never got married and I, I had an abortion in my 20s because I was too afraid to be a mother. This guy wanted to have a baby with me, but he was a polyamorous, wild hippie man who wanted to live on a commune. And I was basically, he sort of talked me into getting pregnant with him and then I changed my mind because I was just too scared because of my family issues of uh, being an only child that was neglected by my parents and I we moved around a lot and my mom got married and divorced four times and my dad was always trying to get his love life together and his career together and so both my parents were struggling with their own issues and I witnessed that and as a child I learned that I was supposed to pull away and not need very much and so now as a 48 year old it seems like I'm still doing the same thing and I feel like I try I don't really have a lot of close friends and I feel like I try to get emotional needs met from my boyfriend and my parents, but they can't do it. I have to do that for myself. So part of my coping mechanism and strategy is just to be a really tough Viking and to try not to need anybody emotionally and to try to just pay my own bills. I mean, I do. I'm totally independent financially. I don't need anybody's help financially. I am completely independent 
and I'm doing actually pretty well financially. I'm a very low income person, but I have a Section 8 rent voucher. So my rent is only a third of my income. And I have really good health care because I'm so low income. I have the really good kind of ACA, Obamacare, affordable health care. I'm very grateful for that. So I'm able to see the doctor and go to therapy. So I'm very, very strong in that way. And I exercise and I eat healthy. Um, but as far as my emotional health, I struggle with being extremely mean to myself because I think I'm I'm actually quite angry with my parents for not being able to really nurture me and build my self-esteem and sort of make me feel safe and secure. And I'm very angry and disappointed in them for that. And at the same time, I feel guilty because I know their family story. I know that my grandparents weren't able to nurture my parents. You know, my, my mother and father both had uh, mothers that were very passive and cold and not nurturing grandmothers. I actually got along better with them as grandmothers than my parents really didn't feel very loved by their mothers. And then their fathers, they were closer to, but the fathers died when my parents were in their 20s. Uh, my grandfather on one side of the family died in a car crash after having a really bad divorce with my grandmother on my mom's side. My, my grandparents had a pretty nasty divorce when my mom was a teenager and my grandfather died in a car crash after remarrying each other's ex-spouses, which created a whole drama in my family, which I didn't know about because I was a newborn baby. Uh, but my grandfather died tragically in a car crash. And then my other grandpa on my dad's side, he died of a stroke or a heart attack. And my dad sort of witnessed it, I think, and was kind of disturbed by that. And so my, my parents both suffered losing their fathers. My mom is always telling me to find my spiritual direction. And it's probably true that I need to not identify so much with my family of origin dynamic, because the truth is, there was a lot of neglect and divorce in both sides of my family. There was lots of, of uh, people divorcing and or dying tragic deaths or moving around a lot. And people were just sort of independent and separate from each other and doing their own thing. And maybe not really a nurturing each other emotionally. So my dad found tennis and... Um, tennis and music and comedy and his job is what pulled him through his emotional problems and then my mom she is uh really into nature and meditation and eastern philosophy and advaita vedanta non-duality and so that's how she coped with her uh family issues and she's found a more positive way to live by focusing on spiritual wisdom and eastern philosophy and spending a lot of time in nature and having a nice quiet life on an island somewhere. And so both my parents found ways of coping. And I guess me, the only child of them, my way of coping is to throw myself into work to do my Goddess Kring TV show, my Goddess Kring podcast. Now I'm in a play at the West of Lennon Theater in Fremont in Seattle. It's now July of 2017 in the summer as I'm recording this. And my strategy for survival has been my jobs. And I love my cat. You know, I have a long-term relationship. I had uh, Tux for 11 years. Then I had Stella for seven years. And now I have Kisun so far for two years. And I hope he lives till at least 20. So I might have another um, 10 years with my cat Kisun, hopefully. And my boyfriend and I have been together for about three and a half years. Uh, but I actually don't really know. I think our relationship is pretty healthy. You know, he's one of the best guys I've ever dated. Um, He's responsible, you know, he's an adult, he's um, not very needy emotionally, and I don't know what a healthy relationship is. I'm trying to figure that out. Like, um, there's times when I think that my boyfriend is kind of too much tough love for me, but then at the same time, I feel like he's right and that I do need to learn how to be independent emotionally from other people. I don't really know. My dad has always drilled into my head, be independent, be independent, be independent, Shannon. Your job is to be independent, independent, independent. And then I don't know what my mom's message to me is. I think she wants uh, me to learn how to be more interdependent with other people. I'm not really sure. But my therapists have told me that I probably need to do both. On one hand, I need to learn to trust myself and know that I'm okay by myself independently, but that but that people do need to give and receive love with each other. And people to some extent do need each other. I know that 
I need people to hire me as a model. You know, when I go to the doctor, I need the doctor to, to be a doctor and, and help treat me. I mean, I can't be my own dentist and my own doctor and my own everything. You know, I need a car mechanic. I need, people do need each other to some extent, but I have a lot of guilt and shame around being needy. And like, I shouldn't need a boyfriend and I shouldn't need um, kindness from others. But the thing is, I'm really mean to myself. And so I can see why I'm miserable sometimes because I'm so cruel to myself. And I'm, I'm afraid of other people and I feel competitive with other people. And I really like the actors that I'm in this play with. But at the same time, I feel kind of afraid of them. And so I kind of keep to myself. I'm a little bit friendly, but I mostly just keep to myself. I'm just trying to, to get my lines you know I do my lines I go on stage and I have four lines in one scene wrapped in bandages and a wedding scene and then there's another scene where I'm wrapped in plastic naked under the plastic and then I say a kind of funny line about cheesecake and a seductive voice and then this guy feeds me cheesecake and it's it's actually really fun to get up on stage and do this scene in front of an audience and I like it I like being on stage uh, but I have to just say that I don't really know uh, emotionally what it is to be healthy. And I'm afraid to take the Lamictal mood stabilizer drug. I'm not sure if I'm going to take it, but at least I have the prescription now. And I'm just trying to figure out what the best thing for me is. I'm trying to figure out, I don't really know as a 48-year-old adult. I mean, it's so embarrassing that I'm 48 years old and I'm like, I feel like I'm still nine years old or 12 years old or nine years old is when my mom decided that we would leave San Diego and we, I was born in San Diego, California. And then we took off in our car when I was nine and we lived in Petaluma for a while and a, um, Evolution Art Institute art school and my mom dated her art instructor and then we had a series of uh, moving around a lot and I went to three different schools in fifth grade and I don't know if I'm ever going to get over this stuff and then my mom says well find your spiritual direction and even Eckhart Tolle and Oprah Winfrey and Wayne Dyer and all of these spiritual people say and Joseph Campbell is basically if you identify with your family dynamic, especially if you have trauma in your family, it might keep you stuck in being a victim. So I've always been afraid of denial, but so I definitely don't deny that I was neglected as a child and we moved around a lot and it was difficult for me. But I also acknowledge that my parents are both highly intelligent, sensitive people who taught me some good things and gave me some positive things. So they did both. They, in some ways, my childhood was really traumatic, really stressful, really kind of awful and frightening and, and disturbing. And there was lots of shocking changes and marriages and divorces and moving around and going to different schools and kids picked on me in school and I didn't know how to deal with it. I still don't know how to, how to stand up for myself sometimes when people are mean to me. Mostly I am mean to myself though, that my biggest, my biggest, uh, danger to myself is me when I get angry and I turn the anger in on myself because I feel guilty for being angry with my parents because I feel sorry for my parents for what they suffered as children. And even currently, I feel like both my parents are kind of sensitive and frail in a certain level and I worry about them. But I know that it doesn't help my parents for me to worry about them. So I guess this this episode of Goddess Kring podcast is for me to just talk about my family issues. And I probably do need to do what Eckhart Tolle says, which is be in the now. In the now, I am Shannon Kringen, 48 years old, living in Seattle, totally independent financially. I don't need my parents. I'm fine. I don't need their help. And I need to learn to say no to people who want my help in a certain way that drags me down. I need to focus on taking care of myself, putting myself first. I'm a very good art model. I've been doing it for 25 years here in the Seattle area and I work for lots of different people and I'm very reliable and I show up and I do a good job. I'm very proud of that. I feel kind of lonely and sad maybe and I don't really have a lot of close friends. I don't really, I don't know. I mean, my spirituality is I've gone on meditation retreats, uh, 10 day silent Vipassana meditation retreats and I do think that there's the, the who I am in my soul is beyond uh, being raised by my parents and having a difficult childhood. The fact that I had an abortion in my 20s is something I went through. I sometimes feel guilty for making that decision. I mostly feel like I should have never gotten pregnant in the first place. Uh, I guess it took courage for me to allow myself to get pregnant 
but then I was just too scared. I didn't want to quit my job. I was really afraid. I didn't want to be on welfare. Uh, we don't have a very good welfare system here in the United States. So I did not want to go on welfare and being a single mother. The father of my child said he would stay with me, but he didn't believe in marriage and he didn't believe in monogamy. He's polyamorous. So I was just too afraid uh, to give birth with this man. I was afraid to quit my job. I wanted to keep making money and be independent financially from anyone. The, the guy that I was pregnant with, his life was not going well financially. So I was like, how are we going to raise a kid together? in this situation and I did not want to give the baby up for adoption. I was just, I knew that if I gave birth to a child, I would not want to give it up because I would love it and I would want to take care of it. But I didn't know how well I could do emotionally and financially for the child. And so I decided to have an abortion in 1996 and I'm still sad about it. And I wonder what if, but I'll never know. And I've never gotten pregnant ever since. And I've never really had really stable relationships I haven't met too many guys that wanted to have a baby with me, but the guys who have wanted to have babies with me, I didn't feel safe. I don't think that I could ever feel safe having a baby with someone. I really do admire people who become parents. I think it's a very brave thing to do, especially if you have a difficult childhood that you're trying to heal from, because I was really afraid that I would repeat the pattern with my child, and I didn't want to neglect a child, or I have a lot of anxiety, and I didn't want if I gave birth to a child, I wouldn't want the child to pick up on my anxiety. And you know, kids are very sensitive and they pick up on what their parents are feeling. So I was just too afraid that I would damage a child by giving birth to a child. And I, in some ways I might've been a really good mother, but I was basically too afraid to quit my job and be um, dependent on someone else financially. So I made the choice that I made. And ever since 1996, I've had a series of relationships that didn't work out too well. Now I am in a relationship with a man that I've been with for three and a half years. And I'm sad that he can't come to the play that I'm in. And there's the situations going on in his life. And somebody in his family passed away recently. And now he's having to go and help another family member uh, because somebody passed away and this other person needs a little extra support right now and you know they have to do family things and I'm just like my own like separate person I don't really feel like I'm part of any family except my mother and my father I need to find my spiritual direction I think my main purpose on this earth is to do my artwork and share it with people to be a model and to do I, I paint abstract pure abstraction I uh, do music and poetry. I now have a keyboard that I can play with. I mean, I feel like my purpose on this earth is to perhaps do my artwork and be independent. I don't know if I'm ever going to learn to have close, loving relationships with other people. I love my boyfriend. I'm not really sure if we're fully compatible in a big, like, I want to be your spouse kind of way, but we're trying at least to be as close as we can. And He's a bit older than me. He's 15 years older than me, and we're very different in some ways. He was raised in a military family. I was not raised in a military family at all, zero. So I have a very different perspective from him. And I'm just sitting here alone in my apartment. getting. I'm going to go do the play, and I feel really sad. I feel angry. I feel scared. I feel like I, I know that life is what we make it and we have to be strong and we just have to do our own thing and be independent and make the best of it and make the best of the cards that we're dealt. And I do love plants and animals and I love music and I'm just going to make the best of it and I'm going to try to forgive my parents. I feel very, very angry I need to, at my parents for neglecting me. Part of me wishes they had just given me up for adoption to a family that really wanted me but I'd really love my parents and I know that they love me and they wanted me because they kept me but at the same time I feel just angry and then I feel guilty for being angry with them and I then I so then I say okay fine I'll just take the anger out on myself which is also like a waste of time like why take anger out on yourself if you're mad at your parents or mad at the bullies who picked on you in school or you know whatever you're angry about uh, if you turn that on yourself, it's really not going to help the world or me for me to to beat myself up for whatever. You know, I feel like I should be a better daughter to my parents, which means 
I don't know what, but my parents also gave me like weird ideas about success and how it's an ego trip. If you're too successful, then you're on an ego trip or you're overrated or underrated. You know, my dad has this theory about people that are overrated and underrated. You know, it's just high school with money. It's all a beauty contest, blah, blah, blah. He tells me these things, at least he used to. He doesn't do that anymore, but he used to, and it was enough to damage me and scar me. And then my mom would tell me things about, oh, this person's on a power trip. Oh, there's such an ego tripper, blah, blah, blah. So I don't really feel like it's okay to succeed because that means I would be on an ego trip. And I know I need to let that go. I need to get rid of that. That's just a silly, like, lie that my parents told me about being successful. You know how some families pressure their kids into being successful. I feel like my family almost encouraged me to be humble and don't be too successful. And so I have a fear of both failure and success. I mean, like nobody likes to fail. It's embarrassing. But but to be afraid of success and to, to worry that that's shallow or it means you're on an ego trip or that other people will be threatened by you if you're too successful or other people will be jealous of you if you're too successful. You know, that's really painful that, that I feel trapped. Like I can't really, f I don't want to fail, but I also don't want to succeed. So I'll just stay in the middle somewhere. I'll just be like, not really too successful, but not a total failure. I'm just somewhere in the middle. But then I listened to Eckhart Tolle and then I realized none of that even matters. All that matters is I'm here now, I'm breathing, I'm on this planet, my soul incarnated and I'm here on this earth and I'm just here to be Shannon Kringen and express myself and do whatever I can on this earth before my body dies and passes away. So I was born into the particular family that I was born into. My boyfriend doesn't believe any of this. He just thinks it's all random and we just make it up as we go and he doesn't believe in karma and he doesn't believe in in any kind of spiritual mystical anything it's just we're on this planet here we are make the best of it have fun while you can so I think that his philosophy about being alive is probably different than mine I think that my philosophy is more like everything is a tarot card I do feel like my soul chose the parents that I was born in born with you know my mother and father had sex and created me and I feel like my soul probably chose those parents I feel like I did commit suicide in two previous lifetimes and I'm not going to do that again so I'm on this planet to learn and grow and heal and evolve express my own unique thing every single person is totally unique we all have different uh, fingerprints literally and we have different voices and we have different talents so I feel like I'm on this earth to share what I can and I'm grateful that I'm able to record my voice right now and that I have a safe place to live. I'm grateful that I have a wonderful cat. I'm grateful my parents gave birth to me. Um, I love my mom's artistic talent, her love for plants and animals. I love my father's uh, gift of uh, comedy and music and language. And he has a really amazingly great sense of humor, very unique, kind of like George Carlin and Richard Pryor and Steve Martin and interesting comedians like that. He's very intelligent, very clever, very witty. I admire that my dad takes care of his body. He eats healthy and exercises and he has a good job that he does full time and he's very financially responsible. I mean, these are all good things that I'm grateful for, uh, but I feel like my parents don't know how to nurture me and they don't know how to help me feel safe. My dad's always telling me to be independent which is a good message in a way, but in, in another side of that is that I feel like if I fall, he won't catch me. And he once told me that he wasn't going to leave me anything when he dies and he was going to spend all of his money while he's alive and that I better be independent. And then other times he says, oh no, I'm going to leave you something. Don't worry. You know, you're my sole beneficiary on my life insurance. And then I start feeling guilty. Like, what am I, a gold digger? I'm not a gold digger. I mean, I've never been married or had kids. I don't have any boyfriend taking care of me. You know, I usually date guys where we just split, you know, he pays for his dinner, I pay for my dinner. So we split the cost of everything down the middle equally. So it's not like I'm being pampered by some nice boyfriend, but I don't want that anyway because I don't want some man to own me. I've never wanted to change my name. If I ever get married, I'll never change my name. It'll just be Shannon Kringen and I'll have my own bank account. So I don't think I'll ever be getting married, but I don't really feel safe. I don't really trust other people. I feel like my job is just to make money and be independent and do the best I can to try to love other people. Um, 
I guess it's sad that my heart is not very open in some ways. I'm not very vulnerable in some ways. I'm just too afraid. I've been vulnerable in the past and I'm done with that. So now I'm, I'm more of a Viking. You know, the whole goddess Kring thing I did on my TV show from 1996 to 2011. I did a weekly TV show in Seattle called Goddess Kring, where I danced around nude with body paint and I talked. I think it was kind of a video diary and a cry for help. I was reaching out. I felt like my parents did not give me enough support and attention and they did not like give me uh whatever it was i needed to build a high self-esteem i know that i'm very talented with abstract art there's a lot of bad abstract art in the world but my my abstract drawings i think are very well composed i'm a very good photographer i know how to use color and shape very well when i draw abstractly and paint i'm a very good shoe painter I gave Tori Amos a couple pair of shoes over the years. Tori Amos thanked me in front of the crowd at the Paramount Theater in Seattle. I've been in plays. I'm in the World Naked Bike Ride. I mean, I've done a lot of brave things in my life. I've done a lot of goddess screen monologues. Uh, I like it when people tell me they're inspired by me to be more brave and to like take a, an art class or do music or theater or dance or do whatever it is that they're afraid to do. I like the idea that maybe... Uh, me being honest and sharing in this way is inspiring you to take better care of yourself or be more honest with yourself about who you are and what you want in life. I'm tired of feeling guilty and angry. I'm tired of feeling guilty for that I was even born. I feel like if I wasn't born, my parents would have finished college. They both dropped out of college uh, to get married and have me. But I don't know what would have happened. If my parents had never gotten pregnant with me, then they would have probably broken up and done different things with their lives and maybe their lives would have been better but you know that's silly you know I was born so obviously I meant to be here because I was born so and obviously I wasn't meant to get to have a child because I had an abortion instead of giving birth so I chose to not be a mother I chose to just be on my own and I have dated many 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 guys and I've dated some wonderful guys. I've dated some guys that I had a very abusive relationship with. And that was partly my fault and partly their fault. I know that I'm abusive to myself and I'm probably abusive to others at times. And I try not to do that. I usually apologize if I lose my temper. I say, I'm sorry, I lost my temper. Uh, I was just really angry and scared. I have issues. So I'm still trying to figure this out. So I don't really try to make friends. A lot of people try to be friends with me, but I, I don't really reciprocate a whole lot and I'm kind of keep to myself a lot so I'm just acknowledging this is the reality that I live in I'm 48 and I'm pretty independent and I don't really know what healthy emotional needs are I hope I can figure it out I don't know you know to give and receive with people um, in, a, in a healthy way would be nice um, I love my cat I love plants. I love animals. I guess I'm repeating myself at this point. I hope that I can just keep surviving and live out my life and die of old age whenever my body's natural time to die is. Uh, I'm not going to commit suicide because I think I've done it two previous times. But sometimes I do have an escape, a fantasy of escaping this planet and just leaving. But I know we're all going to die someday anyway. So we may as well stick around and you know have an adventure and have life and make choices and learn as we go and and have good experiences and bad experiences and learn as we go and maybe I need to start doing positive affirmations again start going to the center for spiritual living and start trying to affirm what I want in life you know I would like I had a difficult past you know I'm 48 now I'm going to be 49 in October of 2017 uh, I hope that I can figure out what I want in life and try to create it and just keep surviving. I'm really kind of irritated by capitalism. I wish that we had a more socialized democracy, you know, democratic socialism, single payer health care, get capitalism out of health care. I know I've said this many times, but capitalism has no place in health care. We're the only the United States of America is the only country that. Uh, has a sort of uh, for-profit corporate, um, you know, healthcare system. It's it's really corrupt. It's really sad. The prices are artificially high. I know that there are antibiotics in England that are seventy-five cents a pill, and in America they're like ten dollars a pill or something, which is ridiculous. And like saline bags are like twenty-five or fifty bucks here in the United States, and a saline bag in other countries is like five bucks or one buck, or in Cuba it's probably twenty-five cents. I mean, in different countries it costs a lot lower. 
for the same medical things that we have here in the United States, $30,000 for a C-section for a woman in the United States of America. In other countries, it doesn't cost that much and you just pay your taxes and you get health care, and it's a public service. So yeah, so there it is. Thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio. This is my podcast. I don't know what number podcast it is, but it is july of 2017 thanks for tuning in i hope that i inspire you to love yourself be more brave be authentic authentic ejaculation of my soul molten orange liquid glow anger takes its toll blowing status quo that's part of one of my poems i know that i repeat myself but that's because i'm have a wound and a, and a chip on my shoulder about being not listened to. I feel like my parents don't really listen to me. Maybe they do, but I feel like they don't. I don't know if that's a distortion or not, but I feel like people don't listen or understand me, and that's why I repeat myself. And I'm very sorry if it's annoying to you that I repeat myself. I'm trying to learn how to be a better communicator. So thank you for listening. Please love yourself, and please try to forgive yourself if you're hard on yourself. I, I tend to really be hard on myself. I want to forgive my parents and acknowledge that I'm angry with them and feel disappointed by them. But at the same time, I want to try to forgive myself and forgive them and forgive people who bullied me in high school, people who bullied me and picked on me as a little kid, forgive myself for not knowing how to stand up for myself. So all I can do is be myself. And uh, I think that I'm kind of an unusual person. And I don't think a lot of people understand me or even like me, but that's okay. And I don't know if I like very many people either. I'm kind of picky and I like plants and animals more than I like other humans. I love to, I volunteer at the zoo and I love to smell the goats. I love the smell of animals and I love nature. I love plants and animals and the way they smell. And I think I just sitting and observing other animals besides human is, is a refreshing. I feel like animals calm me down and I learn from them. They live on by their instinct. Uh, animals are less complicated than human beings. You know, they tend to live in the present moment. We can learn from animals because they do live in the present moment. So thank you for listening. I hope that I can uh, heal and grow and learn to forgive myself and my parents and anyone who picked on me. And thank you and have a wonderful day or night if you're listening to this. And my podcast is always free. So feel free to spread the word. If you know anybody that wants to listen to a podcast, feel free to spread the word about my podcast. I archive this. This airs live on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. And then I, I archive it on Mixcloud. And the first several episodes are on bandcamp.com. But I mostly archive this on my YouTube with a slideshow of my photos. And I archive it on Mixcloud. Mixcloud and YouTube and Patreon. And it's always free to listen. And I think there are 39 or 40 episodes at this point. So thank you so much for listening. Maybe sometime I'll get... Um, an audio recording audition um, thing ready for auditioning for doing some voice work. I kind of would like to do some kind of thing with my voice on a commercial level, but I don't know if I ever will, but maybe I will. I took a couple of voiceover classes. The funny thing is, is that I didn't do as well in the voiceover class and rehearsal as I did when I do real performances. Same thing with the rehearsal of the play that I'm in. I seem, it seems like I was kind of shy around the other actors during rehearsal. And then when the real audience showed up, I did a much better job because there was the audience. They needed me to just do my acting and I did a good job and I was more brave and more comfortable actually acting on stage in front of an audience than I am acting in front of other actors and the director. I guess I feel like they're scrutinizing me, the, the, the other actors and the director, I feel more scrutinized. And then when the audience is there, I feel like they're just glad to be there and they want us to entertain them. So I feel like, okay, I'm going to do my best to entertain you. Here you go, audience. So I guess I, ha I that's a gift of mine, I guess, is that I'm kind of comfortable with having an audience. When I model for art classes, I feel comfortable. I'm nude in front of people and I know I don't look perfect, but I think I look good enough and I just sit there and hold still and they draw and paint and I feel very comfortable around um, artists that are drawing and painting me and staring at me when I'm naked. I feel completely comfortable doing that. Always have, you know, I started in 1991 or two 
And I remember my first gig was at Cornish in Seattle, Cornish College of the Arts. And I modeled and I felt instantly comfortable. I, I had a feeling I would be good at it. And I, I was like, wow, this feels normal to me to be nude in front of people in an art class. I used to take drawing classes and I never really liked drawing the model. I thought I'd like to be the model. So I switched and I became the model because I like to draw pure abstract shapes and designs. I like to really design things and compositions and color and shape. And that's what I'm really good at. And drawing realistically is not fun for me. I don't like measuring and trying to imitate reality. I like to create my own reality when I paint and draw. So I love to pose for other artists who like to draw the human figure. So thank you for listening. Those are some of my gifts. And I hope that we can all figure out what our gifts are and celebrate those gifts and don't let anybody drag you down don't let anybody discourage you including yourself you know do what you love and please build on your gifts that's temple grandin's message as well she's an amazing autistic woman that i really love i got to see her um, hear her speak live twice and uh, her message is to build on your gifts and focus on doing what you love and don't focus on what you're bad at and what your your deficits are whether you're autistic or dyslexic or whatever issues you have you know nobody's perfect focus on what you're good at and build on that and don't let anybody discourage you especially yourself you know my biggest enemy is my own self-criticism so thank you for listening sending love to everyone love and forgiveness so be yourself no matter what they say that's a line in a sting song called englishman in new york that i love from the dream of the blue turtles album 1997 i love the lyrics of tom petty and tori amos and lots of other musicians uh, music is very important to me i memorize lyrics i know the lyrics of hundreds of songs mostly tom petty and tori amos songs uh, lots of rolling stones and the police uh, Pink Floyd, lots of really cool bands, Dead Can Dance, so many good bands, Beck, Jason Webley. Uh, I love Amanda Palmer. I don't love Amanda Palmer's music, but I love her message. I love her book, The Art of Asking. I think Amanda Palmer is very intelligent and very inspirational, and I admire her greatly. And uh, thank you for listening. I admire all the people that are out there expressing themselves and taking risks. And I love the people that are fighting for single payer health care in the United States of America. We need to have nonprofit public service health care. Thanks for listening. I got to head to the play now. Going to go perform. Thanks for listening. Have a good day or night. My website is shannonkringen.com if you're curious, or just Google Shannon Kringen or Goddess Kring if you want to see my artwork, my music, my all my free content online. I have Creative Commons photos you can publish for free. I love to share freely. Since I make a living as a model, I can give my art away for free. Thanks for listening. Do what you love and the rest will follow. <laughs> Crumple still skin, crumple still skin, amazed at the orange mount, crumple still skin, stripe there, volt this, volty rinsing it off, undulate morph melded, zoom away, zoom away, crumple still skin. Me ball, me ball. Lavender, fuzz. lavender fuzz. That's too lavender foxy, too lavender foxy. buddy. Lavender, lavender buddy. me. Lavender Could you would you see you and the slippers and the slippers? Wedding, the slipper. Wedding slipper. slipper. Wedding slipper. Wedding Slip on painted Slip spaceship on painted top, spaceship organ top. leaf, paw whisker, whisker, on, the whisker on the spaceship flower with the gray on the gray. gray, on gray. Barely spaceship buds, passion, passion flower in the hour of wave, and, and, and the sunshade shadow drum is washed, is washed clean, washed clean. Mixed, with water. mixed with water, banana slug with crumple still skin. Crumple still skin, amazed at the orange mount. Crumple still skin, stripe there, volt 
this vaulty rinsing it off, undulate morph melded, zoom away, zoom away, fried as the water trickles and the droplet festival takes place for pop stars everywhere with ladybug yellow and green drops, flower paints and warped fireworks in the silo, amazed at the space fire with digging up and eating your green, your greens. The melon was happy to be eaten, to be and the broccoli in the library glass diamond-shaped windows with the chrome of pride and the pride of pride, kitty and flower. And the light moss painted with chickens. And the fish were jealous and they wanted to be painted as well, even though they had silky, silvery, sparkly scales. The fish were jealous and they wanted to be painted in the cream style. The hot tar lady painted Ryder and the tar man was the painted tower and the hot tar man near painted cement for solstice was under a lovely tree with the stripes across the torso black shiny friend sparked up puff puff crumple still skin crumple still skin amazed at the orange mount crumple still skin stripe there volt this volty rinsing it off undulate morph melded zoom away crumple still skin I sampled my voice again on my keyboard so it's kind of silly to do my voice i can easily do like a different kind of a sample like i could do this like Try a totally different sound like Shazam. So Shazam. 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 But maybe it sounds better to do like more of a mellow thing. Shazam. 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 <laughs> That's funny, isn't it?
what's interesting is it does three it does three different looping it, it echoes it and then it like repeats it there's like three different kinds of loops you can do with this fun to play. interesting the way it echoes and repeats itself and I'm gonna play around with doing like funny silly words and then I think I'm mostly gonna just make abstract sounds and play with my voice I could also take some wind chimes and wave them around and see if I can record wind chimes and see what that does and if I can ever get my cat to meow um, into a microphone I might sample my cat's meow but I mostly want to probably use my own voice that seems to be the funnest thing for me is because I don't really think I can sing in a traditional way, but I'm interested in doing, I can sing a little bit. Um, glory, glory, hallelujah, when I lay my burden down. So I can sort of sing, um, but I can't always hit all the right notes that I want to hit. But uh, I love, 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 love playing with audio. I love music. I listen to Tom Petty, Tori Amos, Bob Dylan, Neil Young. Jimi Hendrix, Pink Floyd, Miles Davis, Frank Sinatra, The Moody Blues, Simon and Garfunkel, The Rolling Stones, The Beatles, The Doors. I mean, I like lots of different music. I like some fusion jazz. I like experimental jazz. I like classical and rock and roll and reggae. And I love The, the Police and Sting and... Uh, Stuart Copeland's amazing drummer and I just love lots of different music I recently saw Marty Stewart at the Triple Door in Seattle I mean I just love music and audio and I just want to do what I can sonically with with sound and continue enjoying all the musicians that I love I've written poetry I've sort of written some songs but mostly I seem to write spoken word poetry and eventually I would like to learn how to lay my voice on top of musical tracks I've done that in recording studios where I play instrumental audio and then somebody helped me so that I could listen on the headphones live and then add my voice on top of the music uh, but I don't know how to do that on my own, but now that I have this keyboard, a fan of mine got me, I can play with it with Audacity, which is a free software program on my computer, and I could do multi-tracks and layers and, and echoes and reverb, etc. So thank you for listening to my audio experiments. I think uh, I do a weekly podcast called Goddess Kring. 
and I will link my music. I have all kinds of experimental free MP3s on my website if you want to download free music. I've got all kinds of interesting music you can sample or, or just uh, listen for fun. Thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring from Seattle. Check it out. Life can be interesting. There's so many scary things happening in the world, and I feel so grateful that I can sit here with my kitty and I worked hard today as a model, so now I can stay home and relax with my kitty and make some audio experiments for my podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good night. Shallow model. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring.